Good morning, Interweb, Warbuilders Log 30. So we are continuing to flesh out our planet here, placeholder name Kretak. We're on the road to getting climate zones marked in, but in this video, I wanna take a little detour off the trodden path and I wanna talk about upwelling and coral reefs. Nothing basically got to do with climate zones whatsoever, but at least in my opinion, I think these are really fun topics to cover. But first, before we get into that, we got to do some follow up. Point number one, in the last video, we marked in our wind circulation patterns. Now, a few people got in contact with me to say that they thought these patterns were incorrect, mainly because based off these patterns, they figured out that you may not be able to find the sorts of climate zones we find on Earth. Or more specifically, this planet may not have the sorts of climate zones Earth has in the same locations. So for example, on Earth, between about 25 and say, 35 degrees north and south on western coasts, we see Mediterranean climate zones for the most part. In this region here, we probably won't see Mediterranean climate zones because this cyclone here, based on what it's doing in summer and winter, probably makes this an unfit area for Mediterranean climate zones. And that's entirely fine because remember our ocean currents and our air circulation and later on our precipitation and our temperature will be based on what this planet is doing, not what Earth is doing. So this planet has a different axial tilt. This planet has a different arrangement of land masses, et cetera, et cetera. So all of these circulation patterns will necessarily be different. Therefore, the climate zones won't be, or at least the location of climate zones won't be analogous to Earth. And again, this is not a bug. This is a feature. This is what we want. It would kind of be a failure of this methodology if at the end of the day, we come out with something that basically just is Earth. We shouldn't get that. We should get something that looks unique to this planet. So I hope that makes sense. I'm not sure how well I explained that, but I guess the TLDR is that we'd expect things to be Earth-like, but not exactly like Earth. All right, that's point number one. Point number two, I have updated my website, artifactscene.com, links in the description. If you pop down to the planet page here, you'd see we have a new map. I really have to change this. This is, doesn't look the best, but it is what it is for now. More importantly, we have this boy. -o. How cool is that? That's so dope. So this is a false relief uh, view of the planet, Kretak, spinning in space. Absolutely lovely. Adore this. Now, I did not make this. I do not have the skills to make this. Shout out Andy Kohler, I think. Could be Kohler. They are a really talented blender artist who put this together for me. So shout out to them. Uh, everyone, if you can, head on over to their YouTube channel, Andy K Arts. And they have a tutorial up on how to create this exact thing in Blender if you want to mimic it. So go check it out and go show them some love. Links in all the usual places. Andy K Arts, massive, massive thank you. Absolutely adore your work here. Just, just gorgeous. And also I've updated some of the other animations on the site. So here's a tectonic history animation. I won't bother playing it for you. Kind of like the ones we've seen before, except just updated plate history, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, if any time you want to know about the canon of this setting, uh, artifactscene.com got you covered. Okay, that's follow-up done. Let's do some upwelling. So let's do some explainy time before we actually get drawing. Uh, let's say we have an ocean. Here's a bunch of waves. How delightful. And let's say we're looking top down on the ocean. And let's say there is a wind current or wind pattern that goes this way. Now, you'd think, right, that because the wind is traveling in this direction, the sort of net travel of the water would also be in this direction, right? That would totally make sense. Turns out that is not the case due to a thing called Ekman Transport. And don't worry, this will all make sense in a second. And what Ekman Transport basically says is that the net flow of water will be 90 degrees with respect to the direction of the wind flow. So in this scenario here, the wind is blowing horizontally across the screen. Therefore, the net flow of water will be in this kind of direction. 90 degrees with respect to the direction of the wind flow, which is just one of those things that you're just like, what even? But yeah, it's totally a thing. Wikipedia page, links in the description. You can go check it out. So broadly speaking, the reason for this is the Coriolis force. And anytime we have the Coriolis force involved, things get messy and complicated. So on a planet, let's say we have some wind directions here. 
something like that. In the Northern Hemisphere, so we'll call this North, we expect the net transport of water to be 90 degrees clockwise with respect to the wind current. So if this wind current here is going poleward, 90 degrees clockwise would be this way. Similarly, if we're going equatorward, the water would be moving 90 degrees this way. And in the Southern Hemisphere, we expect the same thing except counterclockwise. So poleward, 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 90 degrees counterclockwise. Equatorward, 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 90 degrees counterclockwise. So that, in a grossly oversimplified nutshell, is Ekman transport. Now, this all seems fairly non-consequential at this stage, but it actually is really important. Or at least very interesting. So imagine we're in the Northern Hemisphere, for argument's sake. Let's say we have a section of coastline here. How delightful. And let's say we also have one over here. Brilliant. And let's say we have a wind pattern that is running equatorward and one that is running poleward. As per Ekman transport, this wind current here will be driving a bunch of water in this direction, so towards the shore, like so, as will this chap, just like this guy over here. Again, seems pretty inconsequential. And if we look at this in side view, so like here we have a bunch of mountain ranges, here's our ocean, bunch of mountain ranges, etc., and there's some water. Delightful. The water is being driven towards the coastline like so, and similarly here. Now, it can't just pile up at the coastline indefinitely. Things circulate, so therefore, necessarily, it's going to be forced downwards into the deep ocean, like so. And this is a thing called Ekman pumping, or as you may have heard of it before, downwelling. Fairly self-explanatory. The water goes down. Now, downwelling is seriously important in terms of deep ocean circulation, but for the most part, it kind of has little to no world building relevance. So we actually don't think about downwelling too much. I just want to include it for the sake of completion. What we do think about a lot, or what you can think about a lot, is its counterpart. So if we switch the wind directions, poleward on this side and equatorward on this side, again, following our rule, because we're in the Northern Hemisphere, we go 90 degrees clockwise relative to the flow of the wind. Therefore, water is moving in this direction, away from the shore. And the same thing is happening on this side. If this is 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 90 degrees clockwise, water is moving away from the shore. Again, this would hold in the southern hemisphere, just the directions would be reversed. So now we have a whole bunch of water moving away from the shores. And similar to before, it can't just vacate a space circulation occurs. So therefore, necessarily, a bunch of deep ocean water is going to be dragged up to kind of fill in the gap. So this is a thing called Ekman suction, or again, more commonly known as upwelling. You might look at this and go, well, big whoop. But here's the key thing. These deep ocean waters, as they rise up, are going to take a whole bunch of nutrients up with them. More nutrients, more plankton more plankton, more fish, more fish, more fishermen, more fishermen, society, loosely speaking. In short, areas of upwelling will be extremely productive areas. And I think worth noting on a fantasy world because it can help you place where flourishing civilizations may be located. Now it's worth noting, albeit it's not really relevant to us at all, you don't need land for upwelling to occur. For example, along the equator, we expect winds to go to the west, the trade winds. Following our rules from before, northern hemisphere, clockwise with respect to the flow, so that's 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, etc. Water's going this way. Southern hemisphere, counterclockwise, 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, etc. We have a bunch of water going poleward in both hemispheres, therefore, necessarily, they're vacating this space. It's going to be filled with deep ocean water, so we'd get a bunch of upwelling occurring along the equator, out in the deep open ocean. You could mark these in if you wanted to, but I find that I'm just mostly interested in the coastal ranges. Not a whole lot of humans going to be knocking around out here. Anyways, that is probably the shortest explainy time we've ever done. That's literally all there is to it. We're going to look for patterns that look like this. We're just going to keep in mind north clockwise, south counterclockwise, 
we're going to look at our winds, and then we're just going to label coasts that are coasts where upwelling occurs. That is it. So into Blender we go. So just like last time, I've set up a new layer here and I've called it upwelling. If you don't know how to set up layers, I will link in the usual places to a video covering that. I'm not going to set up a summer and winter variant to this layer because we're going to mark summer and winter on the one layer. You'll see why in a second. So I'm going to select that layer, make sure it's selected over in the draw menu. And then all I'm going to do is just start looking at some coasts. So what we'll do is I'll complete, say, the northern hemisphere portion of Esri while talking to you just to outline my thinking. And then we'll go into like a giganto time lapse mode. All right, so let's do that. First thing, I am immediately drawn to this section of coast here. So we have a bunch of wind coming in like this. So we're heading poleward. We're in the Northern Hemisphere. So with respect to the direction of wind, we want to go clockwise. So 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, etc. So we have a bunch of water moving in this sort of direction. Like so, so i.e. vacating this coastal range here. Same deal up here. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to mark in summer upwelling in orange. So I think basically this whole coast here, all the way down to about there, is going to be subject to summer upwelling. Oh, and sorry, I should say, I have the summer, all my summer layers highlighted here. So we're working in summer. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So we'll continue upwards here again, all of this wind here, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, etc. So it's going to be moving this sort of way. So it's like parallel to the coast here, not upwelling. But I guess in these regions, and I think maybe, maybe a little bit here, maybe, maybe a little bit here, something like that, perhaps. Yeah. For now, we'll go with that. Okay, again, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. So we got a bunch of water going this way. So this is hitting our coasts and or running parallel. So no upwelling. Okay, so no upwelling there. Right? Let's pop on over to the North Pole. So again, Northern Hemisphere, direction of the wind, clockwise. So 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, etc. So we have a whole bunch of water going this way. That is moving away from the coast. How early would that start? So like about here. So I'm going to say maybe this entire section of coast here will be subject to summer upwelling. Yeah, I don't think much else here. No, I don't think much else here. Okay, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, etc. Maybe, maybe a small bit here. Maybe a small bit here. Definitely not along here because we imagine if it's all going this way, 90 degrees clockwise to the wind flow pattern, it's just being smashed into this coast here. So we get a bunch of downwelling, which remember we're not marking in, but we'd ex we can expect a little bit to be vacated here. So I'll just put in a maybe a small bit like so. Uh, I'm not going to worry about shallow areas for now. So we're not going to worry about any of this stuff in here, but we are going to worry about the where it borders the deep open ocean. So 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Now that's all hitting the land. Okay, that's fine. I think that's all on this side. Now we pop on over here. Um, again, direction 12, 1, 2. Okay, so here we get a giganto one because effectively, I mean, this entire coast. What about you? Now here we're going to be more parallel. So I think I think this entire coast here, all the way along, is essentially going to be subject to that summer upwelling. And then what about here? So again, this direction 12, clockwise, one, two. So we have a bunch of the net water movement is this way towards the orange portion. So that, that here is going to be parallel to the coast. So we can ignore that. But I think in here, I think in here we're going to get something. Now, how far down do we want to go? Maybe about here-ish, and we'll continue up to about here. And, okay, 90 degrees clockwise again. 12, 1, 2. No, this is all just hitting into the shore, and it's basically vacating from the ITZZ. Again, that would be 
equatorial operating, but we don't need to worry about it. And I'm only going to go as far as the ITZZ and then I'll switch hemispheres later on. Okay, so that, like, it's really simple. Like, that's all there is to it. Uh, that is uh, summer upwelling done. And in fact, should I put in winter upwelling now? Yeah, I'm going to put in winter upwelling. I'm, I'm going to complete this portion of Esri. And then again, we can in earnest do a giant time. So let's switch to winter. Okay, so we're now in winter with our winter wind patterns. I'm going to switch to say blue color. Colors really don't matter here. And we're going to repeat this process. And hopefully because of the changing circulation patterns, the upwelling zones will change. Okay, so let's start close to the ITCZ. So again, clockwise 90 degrees. So our movement is going to be kind of this way, but we're turning. It doesn't matter. We're all... Oh, no, it does matter. Sorry. Hold on. What am I talking about? So this indicates a sort of parallel motion to the shore, but this chap here and all of these chaps indicate mm, some winter upwelling. So I'm going to say that maybe we get some upwelling here and down to about here. Okay. So we'll just do something like that, perhaps. So here, again, it gets a little bit tricky here. Here, the winds are kind of reversing around and we're into the Southern Hemisphere here. So it's anti-clockwise, which means that from this portion here, the net movement is going to be in this kind of direction, which is, you know, it's, it's on shore. It's not away from the shore. So we are fine there. So I think this is the only bit of winter upwelling here. 90 degrees clockwise again, we're back in the Northern Hemisphere. So this is all going this sort of way towards the equator. Ooh. And this can get a little bit tricky to figure out. I mean, maybe patches, maybe small little patches. So this is going that way and the movement is sort of poleward. Maybe we can see a little bit here in this bay region, maybe a tiny bit. Okay, on this side, we're dominated by this pressure system. So again, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Oh, and FYI, I am 100% going to mess up the directions, much like the last video. So someone keep an eye on me and let me know when I do something stupid. So here we have nothing. And we're not worrying about these wind patterns here because they are meeting in this front that is offshore. So I think we got nothing here. This way. Again, maybe, maybe a touch here, like a teeny tiny touch, but... No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Onshore, I don't think we got anything there. Okay, up to the poles. Let's have a look, see. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Clockwise, and actually just like before, we have water moving offshore. So basically this entire region is going to be both active in summer and winter. I don't think there's any more here. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Onshore, that's no good. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. So all of this is moving, well, at least here, is moving into the land. That's no good. And here, once again, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. That's our 90 degree clockwise direction. So again, we have lots of wind or lots of water moving this kind of way. So I think this entire stretch is also going to be year-round. think so. So we got some year-round upwelling here. And here it's all parallel. So again, 12, 1, 2, clockwise. So everything's moving towards the orange thing again. And this is all very parallel, so it's fine. And because of the movement of this front here, this is going to mess with this slightly. So again, 12, 1, 2. We now have downwelling here. We now have downwelling here. But we don't have any other areas of upwelling. Oh, here it's going this way. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, clockwise. So this is all moving this kind of direction. Yeah. So we're going to get upwelling occurring here. So we're going to get a little bit of overlap, say like here. And it'll go down to... And this is occurring because our like subtropical high belt or rather like isolated sort of anti-cyclones is moving up and down with the with the seasons. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, we got nothing happening here now in the south. So again, we're switching. Now we're going counterclockwise. So that's 12 o'clock. So it's going to be 12, 11, 10. So it's going to be in this direction in the southern hemisphere, which would mean, which would mean, because we imagine there's a lot, there's some wind coming down here and it's turning this way. 
which would mean we got a touch of upwelling here. Yeah, we would. There we go. Cool. Very cool. All right. There we go. That is, uh, I think, the continent of Esri, its various upwelling zones. Done. All right. That looks pretty sweet. Now we just got to do the entire planet. Time lapse mode engaged. All right, and there we go. Seasonal upwelling zones done. Orange is summer upwelling, blue is winter upwelling, and where the colors overlap, those regions will experience year-round upwelling. Recall upwelling buffs plankton, and by extension fish and fishermen, etc. This buff will be at its strongest in summer, when plankton is like at its most productive. Also, upwelling will cause fog on nearby shores, and it's going to nerf coral reef formation. And that brings us to the last part of the video, coral reefs. So, corals. Corals come in a whole bunch of varieties, but the ones we kind of concern ourselves with, or at least the ones I concern myself with, are the very enigmatic ones, think the Great Barrier Reef. Shallow water, tropical corals. They hate cold water, so they only exist in regions where the water temperature never drops below about 20 degrees Celsius. That is, to a first approximation, they exist within the tropics within this zone here. Now you'll note the cutouts in this zone. It's not an entirely uniform zone. That is because of upwelling. Remember, upwelling takes deep water. That's very cold, brings it up to the surface. Corals hate cold water, so they won't like being in these areas. Now we're not simulating ocean temperature here, so we're just going to extrapolate some of the patterns here and apply them to our planet. The methodology is quite easy. Number one, just mark out a zone spanning your tropics and to carve away any areas where there's significant winter upwelling. And that's basically that. So I think we can go into our final time-lapse.
All right, there we go. One coral zone. Here there be corals. The one thing I forgot to mention is that in and around the equator, you can ignore winter upreading zones. The idea being that this region is always kind of very warm. So the detrimental effect of winter upwelling on corals is like less extreme. So I ignored this one here and I ignored this stretch over here. No hard guidelines, just kind of kind of go on feel and like artistry, I guess. Same thing over here. I ignored these upwelling zones, etc. But the more uh, poleward we go, the less I'm willing to ignore the winter upwelling. All right, I think that's that. I don't think I've forgotten anything. If I have, there's always follow up next time. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching. Shout out again to Andy K Arts, links in the description. And again, shout out to World Building Pasta and Madeline James Wrights, also links in the description. This method is based upon their work. Have a great one, folks. And until next time, it grouse.